Epic Games blew up the 2D project when we moved to Unreal Engine 5, but I need this template back, so I guess I'm making my own. So where are we gonna begin? We are gonna begin with the third person template because this gives us the best starting point because at least there's a character that spawns into the world and not just like arms or something. So let's take a look and jot down all the major differences that we're going to need to do if we're going to accomplish our 2D template. Currently, we can control the camera's perspective and that is obviously going to need to go. And we can also move front and back as well as side to side. We're gonna need to restrict our player's movement to be side to side if we're gonna get that 2D feel. So let's start with the camera. Within Unreal Engine characters, the camera sits at the end of a camera boom. That camera boom is responsible for deciding how far away from the character the camera is going to sit as well as the perspective or the rotation that the camera is at on the boom. And if that didn't give it away, to hit our 2D perspective, we are going to need to rotate the boom so that it sits at a different baseline than what it currently is around our character. So let's set this to be negative 90 degrees so that it sits on our character's side. And now we have this 2D vibe. Something else we need to do is change the relationship that our camera boom's rotation has with its parent. Right now, we have the boom's rotation relative to the character's rotation, which leads to this uh, horrid and rather sickening pivot that takes place whenever our character turns. To fix this, we're going to set our rotation to be absolute, which means that it's relative to the world instead. So now that our 2D look is at a baseline looking okay, we're going to go into the code and we're going to make sure that our player can't change it. Remember, the code is where the actual implementation or the stuff that does the stuff is held. And lucky for us, Epic's templates are actually pretty readable, so we should be able to track down what we need rather quickly. If we look at the .h or header file, you're going to get an idea of what functionality exists without actually knowing how it gets done. So we have a list of all of our input actions near the top, and then in this protected section here, we have our move and look functions. Do you want to bet that that's what we're going to need to adjust? So now that we know what we're hunting for, let's go ahead and open up the code or the C++ file. This is where the meat and potatoes are. This is where we actually see what is being done to fulfill the contract. So look appears in both the input setup and within its own function. In the input setup, we are stating a relationship between the input action called look action and the function look within our code. Now, since we don't want our character to be able to look around at all, we're actually going to delete all of this code. And don't forget to go back into the header file as well because we want to remove the look action and the look declaration from within the header file since it's no longer going to be a part of our contract. So let's save and compile and see what we get. Uh, yes, now our character's forced to enjoy our 2D perspective. That's one step done. Now we can go and adjust our move so that we can only move in the directions that we want to move. Now, it's very crucial for me to note here that the directions and specifics that you want to implement here are going to depend on the offset that your camera boom has in relation to your character. Remember, the boom dictates the perspective and we're going to choose what is left and right based off of the perspective that we have chosen. But that being said, in this example, we have rotated our boom to negative 90 degrees, so that is going to be our starting point. If we analyze our move method, we have three major steps that are taking place. First, we get the way that our character is looking. Then we're going to assign a forward and a right direction based off of those values. Then finally, we're gonna add the movement input the player makes to the proper directions. Now, you would probably be thinking to yourself that you just need to remove everything related to the right direction from the code, and then you'll be good to go, right? Wrong. Look what happens if we do that. So in this case, we did properly limit our character to one axis, but it's not moving on the right button presses. I'm pressing W and S here. Remember, we're currently looking at our character's side right now, so our entire perspective is thrown off. So what we actually need to do is change the axis that our forward vector receives to be the x-axis from our input. How do I know this? If we go and look at our input mapping context, you're gonna get to see what buttons trigger what input events. If we go into the move action, you're gonna see the usual suspects that can move our character. The WASD, the arrows, controller stick inputs, the gang is all here. If we dive even deeper and look explicitly at the move action defaults, we can see that the move is set up to be an axis 2D value type. This means depending on what specific inputs our player is using, we're gonna have a two dimensional vector depending on what is being pressed. So let's look again at the mapping context and I can show you even more. D is rather boring, but serves as a good baseline because there are no modifiers here. This means that D is going to make the X coordinate of our input vector equal to one when it is held down. S is a little more exciting. It has two modifiers. Negate means we are going to invert the value that we receive. Due to this negate value modifier, it is going to set X to be negative one instead. 
swizzle is even more intense as it controls what axis the input is stored in. So rather than storing this negative one in the X axis, if there's a swizzle modifier, that says we're gonna store this in the Y axis instead. So armed with this general knowledge that the A and D keys are going to now be storing their values for inputs on the X axis of our input vector, we know this is the axis that we care about. So if we go back into our code, we can confidently set our forward direction to use the X axis of this movement vector. And boom, we look in game and our 2D movement is done. But this is not foolproof. Look at these three problems that just came up. First, our camera can get crazy when we have an object in the foreground that we're cutting in front of. Second, our character sassily turns away from the camera whenever we change directions. And finally, our collision can knock us off of our current line, which can be seen as a uh, dangerously bad. The camera is rather easy to fix. If we go back into our character blueprint and look at our camera boom, on this boom, there is going to be a checkbox called the do collision test. This dictates if our camera boom cares about colliding with things. Now, the turnaround is a little more complex, so let's quickly deal with staying true to our two-dimensional line that we've drawn. Based off of our current orientation, the y-axis of the world represents going towards and away from our camera. Therefore, we want to tell our character no to moving in that y direction. To do this, we can go to the blueprint once again, click on our character movement component, and then look for a function that's called constrain to plane. This is going to allow us to specify what plane we want players to not walk on. This is done through the plane constraint normal setting. Since we don't want any y-axis movement, we're going to set the y-axis of this setting to be equal to 1. Now for our sassy turnaround problem. We want our character to always face us when they are turning around. And to be honest, there is not a good way to do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to cheat and go into our blueprint and simply add a 180 degree turn to our camera boom's rotation. Now our character is always going to rotate towards the camera because we have simply switched the direction the camera is looking from. The big downside to this approach is all of the math relating to the the X direction of our movement for all of our future mechanics in this game is going to need to be inverted. So make sure you go into your code and simply negate or change the value of all of the inputs in our X direction to make it so that you actually go in the direction that you're inputting. And that is how I transformed the third person template into a two dimensional template that I've been using as a branching off point for my future game. If you got value out of this tutorial and want to see more devlogs or tutorials from me, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in a future video. Have a great day.